In order to truly understand any Python code, you need to know about scope. Scope is all about which variables can be seen in which parts of your code. Understanding scope allows you to understand closures. When you understand closures, you can understand how many other things in Python work too. I want you to take away two important things from this tutorial. One is the LEGB rule. We'll go through that fully. The second is that closures are a product of code and environment. Let me show you the importance of scope firsthand. Let's assign global string, a string, to the variable a. We then define a function called demo func. Inside the body of this function, we have two statements. The first statement is another string, but this time we'll call it local string. The second is return a. So when we call this function, what we'll get back is the value of a. When we go to print a, we see global string. Printing the result of calling demo func, we can see that we have global string and local string. The first print statement, where we're printing a, we're getting global string. When we print the return value of demo func, we get local string. So we can see firsthand that the name of a variable doesn't mean that we know what that variable will produce unless we know more about the code, which enables us to understand its scope. The LEGB rule stands for local, enclosing, global, and built-in rule. Taking a look at this code here, I want you to notice two things. Firstly, that we have two X's here, one at the global scope and one at the local scope. Secondly, that when you have a parameter in the function definition like this with the Y, there is a line that I want you to imagine runs, which is invisible. The argument that you pass in when you call this function adder, that argument is assigned to Y. Here it would be Y, then the assignment operator, then whatever we pass in. And that's why the Y inside the function that we see here is at the local scope. In addition, anything that's assigned to a variable inside a function, that variable is at the local scope. So here we have x plus y assigned to result, therefore result is at the local scope. Let's print adder 19 and see what we get. We have the answer 29, so x must have been at the global scope. If you're merely accessing a variable, within a function you can access variables at the global scope. Pay very close attention at this point. When we then assign 20 to x inside the adder function, as we just discussed, when you assign a value to a variable inside a function, that variable is at the local scope now. Here, the result is 39 when we call adder this time because result is equal to 20 plus 19 that we passed in. However, even though we've now assigned 20 to x, that doesn't mean that the variable x outside the function now becomes 20. It remains 10, as evidenced here. The global keyword comes into play if you want to make assignments to a variable inside a function, but you want that variable to actually be a global one and continue using the value that you assigned outside the function.
you'd be forgiven for thinking that global variables are evil due to the sheer volumes of venom that they receive. I just want to show you briefly why using global variables as a default, why that's a bad practice. Let's say you have a large body of code, you're working in production, and you have two functions. You decide that you're going to call some very useful variable, x, and you're going to make this a global variable. You have a second function, and in between the first function definition and the second definition, there is a thousand to ten thousand lines of code. The same author of the first function has written a second function, but has long since forgotten that they made the global variable x global. The less than ideal situation we have now is that we can only know the value of x if we go through the code and try and trace back which function was called most recently. For instance, if we call first func, and then we print the value of x, we get zero. But then if second func was called most recently, then the value of x is a thousand. Also notice that x doesn't need to have a global assignment in order to be made global. So for instance here, the first mention is in the function definition when the function is called. The truth is that there are good uses for global variables. You just shouldn't have that as your default. Python allows arbitrary nesting of function definitions. Using this example, that means that we can define the function nested inside the function first. And inside nested, if we wanted to, we could define another function, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and so on indefinitely. Let me take you through what's going on here. We're calling the function first. When first is called, two is assigned to the variable x, so this variable is local to the function first here, and then after that, a new function, nested, is defined. After the function definition of nested, nested is called. So that means that we then go back and x is printed. However, we need to look at x from the perspective of being inside nested. The LEGB rule is the local enclosing global and built-in rule. We can't see a local x. There is no assignment to a variable x inside the function definition of nested. So that means that the next place that the Python interpreter looks is in any enclosing scopes. An enclosing scope is this function definition first within which nested is defined. That's why here, when we assign three to the variable x within the function definition of nested, when we print x, the Python interpreter has a local variable and it looks for a local variable first before looking in any other scope. So we get three. If we get rid of this assignment to x, then now there is no local scope x, so we have two assigned to x in the enclosing scope. If we comment that line out, we have the global variable x, and one is assigned to that variable. So that's why the answer is now one. That's as far as I want to take things in the first part. Let this sink in, go over it again, and in the second part, we can finish off this story of scope enclosures, and that will help us to understand state, closures, and we'll go over namespaces. At that point, we will have the fundamental knowledge to really understand Python classes and object-oriented programming in a way that you wouldn't have if you just jumped straight into it. Please remember to subscribe to this channel, and do let anyone else know who you think will be interested of this content.